that uh, harm reduction is so much more than just reducing harm, you know. Uh, that's, that this is a movement for social justice and, and for human rights. And uh, the motto of this conference is uh, at the heart of the response. And I think at the heart of the response are those people who are really fighting this fight in the, in the, in the first lines. And uh, these are people who use drugs and these are their uh, organizations. And, uh, and uh, this session is an excellent example of harm reduction beyond, uh, the, uh, beyond uh, you know, just public health approach to harm reduction. Uh, harm reduction is not only like a set of public health interventions, not like it, how the UN defines it, for example, like uh, 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 part of the comprehensive package to prevent HIV AIDS among injecting drug users, or uh, how the drug policy makers define it as, you know, as just a supplementary uh, thing uh, beside law enforcement and treatment. So for us, harm reduction is a movement for, for human rights and social justice. And I'm very glad to, uh, uh, to today we will hear very powerful stories of how communities of drug users could self-organize and uh, uh, create their resistance movement against uh, a very rep in very, very repressive uh, environments. So at this uh, uh, session, we will hear uh, uh, from activists from all, over, all around the world. First, uh, uh, we will hear a story from uh, Myanmar, a country in Southeast Asia, from Sutnau, who explains us how drug user activists navigate within the complex network of religious leaders, unofficial authorities, and anti-drug vigilante groups. Then we will uh, uh, have a presentation from Afghanistan, actually, from, uh, 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 from a, a user group uh, that is fighting for the rights of uh, a group of people who live, I think, literally under the bridge in, in the streets of Kabul in a very, very difficult environment. Unfortunately, the presenter, Atta Rahman Hamid, could not make it. He didn't get visa. Uh, to, to Canada, so he's one of the one one of those people who were excluded actually from this conference. So uh, Matt Sauswell, my friend, will present in the name of him, and then uh, uh, we will have a, an activist from here, from Canada, Alexandra De Quit. Do I pronounce your name properly? Quit De Quit. Uh, so she is an activist from British Columbia, and she will talk about how communities of people who use drugs try to. Montreal. Well, sorry, Montreal. Okay, and uh, so how, how, how drug users try to survive in this terrible overdose epidemic in North America. And then we will have uh, Igor Gordon from uh, my own region, from the Eurasian uh, Harm Reduction Network, who will explain how uh, street lawyers are documenting, doc uh, document uh, human rights abuses among uh, people who use drugs. So please keep your questions after uh, the whole whole presentation, so we will have the questions in the end and answers. And uh, I also ask the presenters to keep the time limit, which is 10, uh, 12 minutes. So please, Sut. Hello, everyone. Um, let me introduce again myself. My name is Sut Nao from Myanmar, working with Meta Development Foundation. And uh, now we are working uh, as a partner with the Medicine Du Monde France MDM. So. <coughs> Uh, so today is the last day, time's flying so good. Um, so, yeah, there's one uh, bad new thing I heard when I, just minutes ago, so there's a newspaper writing about well, the, the one of my friends uh, around from the, around from the Mijina town uh, have been beaten by the, uh, anti-drug vigilante group. So that was so, uh, make me feeling like uh, very sad. Because actually this is not the first time, but um, <coughs> uh, this is kind of like, uh, have been uh, doing this kinds of thing for years. But, you know, I'm from, I'm working with the uh, drug users, so I'm part about them, so I'm just feeling like very sad, so this is bad news for me. So now feeling like a bit, how could I say, feeling sad. So now I'm, but I'm trying to speak about uh, the, uh, the rest of my uh, presentation. So, <coughs> 
So before I jump into the presentation, uh, before I jump into the presentation, um, <coughs> I, how can I say, there's a lot of bad things come to me when I was in Myanmar, so you know, but because of my friends, they support me a lot, so you know, like my, uh, my visa got refused and my, I lost my passport on the last day before I came here in Myanmar. So yeah, but everything, you know, I could make it against all odds. So I really would like to say thank you to all my friends. So now, <coughs> so I'm going to uh, present uh, the, this, the contents of my presentation. So uh, I'm going to, I will present about the main element of the context where we uh, implement the project. And then uh, we go, I'm going to present about the uh, strategy and objective of the board organization. After a presentation of the challenges and strengths, then I'm going to include, conclude with the lesson learned and also a short um, documentary. So, <coughs> The, the title of the event I'm going to uh, present is about the activism. So there's no drug users activism in Kachin, uh, Kachin State, Myanmar, but there's a, a strong resistance and uh, there's a strong resistance and organized movement against the drug users in northern part of uh, Kachin State, northern part of Myanmar, Kachin State. So <coughs> they have a they have a, uh, they have a uh, shot uh, kind of like very powerful. It's a kind of like a growing barrier for the organization to implement uh, harm reduction. So, so for example, let's say a couple of months ago, so MDM even had to close one DIC in Mugang area. So now the project, now we, I'm going to present the project now we are doing it's uh, it's aiming at the tackling uh, the the barrier and to incorporate the target community and generate the enabling environment. That is the project now we are doing. So this is the Kachin State. So Kachin State is located between India and China, with the population of uh, around 1.7 million. So uh, all the population are missing like mixing. Uh, most of the majorities are the Kachin, Chan, Burmese, and the Mardi culture. So, uh, this is the Kachin state to imagine what it looks like. So, this is the picture of the uh, drug anti drug uh, vigilante group. They went to the area uh, apart, uh, a bit far from the uh, Mijina town and they're trying the opium fee. So, this is the picture of them. So as you all know, Myanmar is the second largest opium uh, producer uh, after the African nation. So <coughs> the, the, there's a, a northern part of state has a highest HIV, uh, highest uh, burden of drug, uh, problematic drug use, and also that related with the HIV prevalence uh, that reach uh, up to 75% in the Kachin State, in, in, in some, town, some townships in Kachin State, according to the IBBS 2014. And also there's a high numbers of drug users. And another factors that contributing uh, the situation to be worse is the uh, 60 years of violent conflict. That is on another issue. And also Kachin State is a very, rur uh, very rural and limited uh, public services. Uh, 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 transportation and uh, poor trans uh, transportation infrastructures. So that's how the barrier. And also another things like uh, the powerful activism. Now I'm talking about the anti-drug committee, uh, which is formed by the different kinds of, which is formed by the community themselves, community leaders like the uh, religious leader and also the uh, lay persons, all uh, members from different kinds of relig uh, religious they are involving and they form the partisan by themselves and they are against the drug users and also they are destroying the opium fee in the kitchen state. 
So uh, based on this thing, harm reduction, uh, harm reduction intervention cannot be put in place without the support of the general community. Uh, so let's just see the one example uh, which has been uh, occurred in the Mugong area, the, you know, the center which is run by the um, uh, Medicine Jimun, MDM, had even closed because of this, uh, this uh, problem. Sutno's assistant. <laughs> Sorry, we're try trying to get a two minute vision of what is happening. You had what? The same problem? <laughs> so, since I'm standing to get here, closer to let me just try to. Um, Complement a little bit what you yeah. were saying in the beginning. Sudno's friend who was beaten up, actually he passed away because he was beaten up that badly. So, and this is another um, picture of what we're talking about in, in the Kachin state when we talk about community resistance. Source, we traveled to Asia's meth heartland, a region in Myanmar stretching to the... Oh, shit. Sorry guys, it's gonna be just uh, in a, a smaller frame. Is that, does that work militia groups in times of need will assist the government in whatever they need to do. Sorry for that. To get closer to the source, we traveled to Asia's meth heartland, a region in Myanmar stretching to the borders of China and Thailand, where meth production and addiction is out of control. <laughs> Tu Ra has seen his home region particularly ravaged by drugs. He's one of a neglected minority, the Kachin, Christians converted centuries ago by American missionaries. Facing government inaction, Tu Ra is part of a new crusade recruiting church members to join a citizen-led struggle against the drug epidemic. What is this vigilante movement all about? At the below there, we, we can see the subtitle, but... <laughs> so... Now, this is the poster, and... The poster, uh, he is saying, uh, the, the drug, the two the quit, the drug is, is the only way to quit the drug is to group. teaching about the Bible. But these so churchgoers don't just teaching warn the against the dangers the of men. They're detaining the suspected issue. addicts, so now holding we are court, saving and punishing them the when they step out of line. And they the Pachasan vigilantes allowed Global Post special access to film as they go out on their nighttime raids. Sorry, that didn't work that well. Um, so, sorry, the, the subtitles dropped out, but I think it gives a picture. I don't think it's worth to go back again and, and try it all again. But it, it explains who is the Pasisan, who is a community-led resistance, what um, Sutno already was saying. And as you can see, it's not just uh, a, f a few neighbors here and there. It's a real big movement. And as you can see, they take completely the authority in their own hands and they arrest people, lock them up and beat them up, up to what just happened recently to Sutno's friend. So let us just go back to the rest of the presentation. It was just to give you a picture of what is happening. Okay. So, sorry for in inconvenience. Actually, we would like to show all the pictures of the documentary, but 
Sorry. So anyway, maybe you can also catch up somehow. How is the happening in the kitchen today? So now I'm going to talk about the MDM and META collaboration. So as you, uh, you uh, meet, MDM is an international humanitarian uh, organization and working with the drug users in Myanmar for more than 20 years. And then META is also a, a leading national non-governmental organization established in 1927 and working together with the community on community development and the humanitarian response. And then in the sense of partnership, now we are uh, we are exchanging and learning each other. So for example, let's say we have uh, different kinds of expertise. So META is an uh, expert on the local advocacy and the community mobilizing. So MDM also has an expert on the uh, harm reduction, intervention, and the capacity building. So this is the things that now based on this thing, now we are doing partnership and run the uh, uh, project, harm community-led harm reduction project in Kitchen State. So <coughs> the key intervention, there will be three. The first one is enhance the capacity of breathing. And also the second one is to increase the service delivery. And the third one is the advocacy. So advocacy is the most important thing now we are doing. It is really important to increase the acceptance of the general community and also uh, to, have the, uh, to have our project uh, and also could run it. So it is the things that now, you know, the kitchen, kitchen context is quite different from other. So it is really we have to do a lot of a series of advocacy and then we can also do the, after that, we can do the service delivery part. So methodology, it is the pilot project now we are doing. Uh, it's now all, uh, almost one year. And also there's another thing, there are key stakeholders. Now we form the local ADS committee. So local AIDS committee are, compri are comprised of different stakeholders like religious leaders and women leaders, young, uh, youth leaders, they all are involved in the local AIDS committee. And now our project uh, providing a series of training to them and they are playing as a key role uh, among the community. So and the key achievement, what we have so far is like we already uh, opened five center in, f uh, in four lo uh, five locations and also we provided the capacity building for more than 20, uh, 50 staff and we are still uh, doing ongoing advocacy with the different, different stakeholders. So challenges, the challenges is maybe you can also uh, can imagine to convince the community leaders is really take time. At the very first time, we talk about the harm reduction, but they strongly oppose it. But after, you know, time by time, we are, you know, trying to convince them, and then finally they accept it, and then we now can run the project here like this. But in the uh, in general speaking, at the very first time, it's kind of a uh, very challenge. It's really take time. And Then uh, there's also, now we are run the fight center in a uh, fight location, and then all the uh, drug, uh, anti narcotic anti-drug vigilantes are somehow understand on the harm reduction and supporting the project, but the rest of the village, there are still a lot of uh, committees, so we still have to convince. We have to reach out more uh, committees, so this is the challenge we still need to uh, work on. And then there's another lay persons, general uh, lay persons, you know. So there is also the way that uh, you already seen the movie before, that the way they trick to the uh, drug users is kind of like uh, uh, detentions, and sometimes they also open a uh, forced rehabilitation center and send them to the center. So this is the things that they are doing, so resulting in the kind of like a human right violation. So. <coughs> And also continuous process. So it's at the, the challenge is to continue the process that really take time to nurture understanding and also support uh, the program as well as those uh, anti-drug committee. So the strengths, the strengths are the ultimate strength is the community leadership and the ownership. And the second is the, uh, we have, we already formed the local ideas committee in the village level, so they understand, they un understand on the harm reduction and supporting. So under this support of leadership of uh, local ADS committee, 
the acceptance and the perception is really high. So that is the good things. And based on these trends, now we are trying to move forward. So lesson learned. So far, we, the communi good communication has been established between uh, with the uh, local AIDS committee and also the Nagorno anti-drug vigilante group. So this is the potential for the sustainability. So now we are keep trying to work on this. So on the other hand, we made our work on changing the people of the general population, but it uh, still need uh, take time. So. But you know, for example, let's say so far the pilot project for one year, we, we could see that only we distributed only uh, 30,000 uh, 30, syringe and nearly there is the one example. So at the very first step, we, we took a lot of time to convince the uh, drug, uh, uh, anti-drug committee. So <coughs> then the initial investment is high, but later once the community know the ownerships and then uh, it's kind of like their participations are very high and kind of like rewarding and high cost efficiency. So it is the community-based approach now we are doing. So the, the, the last thing is model is built on a long-term vision. It is investment for the future, but it has great potential. But the things, that, but it is not unclear because of the, because of the, in, uh, uh, you know, effective it will be in terms of the, uh, Public, uh, public health. So, because you know, the rest of the now we haven't convinced to the other, uh, to all the budgets and committees. So now we are if we are going to uh, work on these things, so that we still have to challenge. This challenge would be coming from the uh, the community again. So we still have to work on these things. So this this how the uh, lesson learned we have been learning from our pilot project. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.